All right, what's up, Dragon Brood? We finally got Commander Masters. And honestly, we all had different things we were looking for, hoping to be reprinted. But I wanted to take a moment here to talk about the things that did get reprinted and kind of talk about the most interesting or important cards in the set that we may or may not have been paying attention to, maybe didn't even expect, but are worth talking about. All right, first things first, doubling season. Like this card's good all the time. Like I think what makes this card good, other than the fact that it's super desirable, is that it actually fits a whole bunch of different decks, right? Like if you're making tokens, or if you're doing plus one, plus one things, like this is a really cool card and it's not hard to cast at all in Commander. And it actually is kind of like the made for Commander card, right? Like it's in no way do people really want to play something like this in 60 card. This is one of the most Commander-y cards, if you want to call it that, that we could reprint. And honestly, it's needed one because we've had some promos and stuff, but like, we needed this to just be in a set that people could open. So this is a really nice reprint to see, and I'm glad it made the cut. And in that same vein, some of the stuff I said about that, we could actually say about the Great Hinge, because it also goes into nearly every deck. Well, this probably goes into more decks even than doubling season, right? Because pretty much any green deck with creatures wants to play this. It draws cards, it gets you extra plus one plus ones, it gets you extra mana and life. This card does so much. Now it can be a little bit of a bear to cast, but all you really need is one like five or six power creature and this is gonna be super easy to cast. And this is another one that we only had one real printing prior to the set, so it's actually really nice. Now we had some box toppers and stuff, but we finally got this in a set that people can pick up again. And I think this is gonna make a lot of people happy. All right, now Insurrection was more of an interesting one because it's not the type of card that I think we needed around, but you kind of don't mind having it around. It's kind of Red's way to sort of close out a game, right? If you don't have a counter spell or a way to sacrifice a bunch of creatures or maybe a to fairies, whatever, right? To, to blink yourself out. This is gonna end the game. You steal all the creatures, you untap them, you attack, boom, that's it. And this card actually is one of those ones that I think more people would want to play with, but they just weren't a ton available. So it's kind of cool having this printed for those people who would need one or want one. So yeah, this one's pretty cool. Okay, now for this next one, I'm gonna cheat a little bit, and this is gonna be two cards together, but Pure Steel Paladin and Steel Shaper's Gift. These cards actually aren't super in Commander. Don't get me wrong, I've seen them pop up a time or two over the years, but realistically, these have more weight in 60 card magic. And that's not a bad thing. I think it's good that though this set was focused on things for us commander players, well, there are other things here for 60 card decks as well, because some of these cards needed reprints because they hadn't been seen in a decade. <laughs> you know, like, so it's, it's crazy. COVID really makes time weird, right? But really cool that these are available for people. And this should actually help people who want to build some of these decks for stuff like modern or whatever. So yeah, really exciting to see cards like this included and cards that even can work together in the same decks. All right, this is a card I kind of didn't want them to reprint, but I totally understand it making the list, and that's Grave Pact. Like, this card is super annoying on so many levels, but it's so good as well. And it fits fun aristocrats type decks where you're getting to sacrifice your stuff, so now your opponents have to sacrifice things. It makes it really hard, even if you're playing a token deck, for your opponent to block stuff in combat, because if you lose something, they're going to lose something. So yeah, this is a pretty interesting card and changes the dynamics of combat even, which is pretty cool. And this is another one that hasn't had real significant reprints in a long time. So it was kind of cool that it popped up in the set. I wasn't really expecting it, but it makes a lot of sense. And this is one that black players love to play all the time. So I'm definitely expecting to see a lot more of this card, and I'm probably going to lose to it quite a bit. There's another card that kind of fits that description for me, and that's Bribery. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this card, not because it's not good, but just because if I'm playing something with big, awesome creatures, it sucks to lose one to the opponent. And this isn't like Control Magic, where like it sits on the card and maybe I can kill the enchantment and get it back or whatever. This just takes it out of opponent's deck and puts it into play. Damn good card. And probably gonna see a lot more play now that they're more readily available for people. I think the thing about this card too that's interesting is you don't even need to have your deck built around a certain thing. You just need your opponents to have a deck built around certain things, right? And if they have a big dragon or angel or whatever that has a sweet ability, awesome. You have one now. So yeah, this card, definitely going to be seeing a lot more play. And again, I think this is one that the reason you didn't see a lot of it was because of availability. Now that there's more of them, 
I expect to see a lot more of it on the tables. Oh, now this is a fun one, Arachnogenesis. This is one that people really didn't know about because it only been in a commander deck previously. And if you didn't have those, you probably never saw it. You probably have game tables or you probably play a lot of commander and never saw anybody cast one of these. That's because there weren't a ton available and it was becoming more and more hard to find. And this is one of those cards that can totally shape a game. Like you cast this, you literally can just block up a whole combat. You can make a pile of tokens that can give you enter the battlefield triggers and it's instant speed. Like this thing's really, really good and it's cheap to cast. It's almost a too good card, but not really. It's right on that border as far as you could push something, I think at that cost, but a really fun and exciting card. And now you kind of have to start thinking more about combats against green players because more people are gonna have this in their decks. And I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but it's definitely gonna be a fun thing. Oh, another interesting reprint was Jeweled Lotus. This is one that, while I'm not the type of player that needs a Jeweled Lotus, or even play high-end Commander where this card's really the most useful, I actually don't mind it being reprinted. One, because it just gets it in the hands of more players. I think when it initially released, even only a couple of years ago, people didn't really know how popular it was gonna be or how useful it was gonna be, and we discovered that very quickly. But by then, nobody's really going back and opening more of those boosters where it originally came from. So it's really cool to see that Wizards kind of set a precedent here that if a card is so far over the top and specifically made for a format like this, then they're willing to reprint it, even if it's only a couple of years old, because that's not something I thought they were necessarily gonna do. I thought maybe because Jeweled Lotus only has a couple of years under its belt, we might wait a couple of years before it shows up again. But cool that they made that decision, and that's gonna make a lot of players happy. Another card I'm really excited about because I'm a big fan of this is Zakama Primal Calamity. Partly because there's an interesting thing here that dinosaurs are likely to still be a thing when we go back to Ixalan, and there was a chance this card was gonna become even more scarce because no doubt as people open more dinosaurs, people are gonna go looking for old dinosaurs and try to fill out those commander decks or build them for the first time. So it's cool getting a jump on a rare card like this that could have ended up scarce and we're kind of like preempting some deck builds. Now we're not getting to do that with a ton of stuff, but it is cool that this kind of thought went in and this card gets to show up and is already there waiting for all the other dinosaurs to show up to build a deck around. This might even end up being people's dinosaur commander because it's the one that's available right now. So kind of cool to see it show up and it is a really fun and powerful card. If you never played with it and you have the mana to support in your deck, you probably should, even if it's not a dinosaur themed deck. Okay, and this is another one I'm gonna cheat on, but I'm gonna include them as a group and that's all of the medallions. The medallions are actually really useful for monocolor decks. And we don't see that many of them. And don't get me wrong, you can still play them in multicolor decks, especially if you have a bunch of gold cards and still reduce a lot of your spells, but they really shine the most for single color decks. And we weren't really seeing a bunch of those. So maybe, possibly, these existing bring those back to the forefront a little bit. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think the more variety we can include and give more tools to more things, that's always a bonus. And again, these had only been reprinted a couple of times in the past. So it was really nice to see these come up again because this is another one I wasn't even thinking about an inclusion in the set, but actually is really nice. And like I said, if it does usher in another wave of single color decks, hey, I'm all for it. And those are my top 10 picks for Commander Masters brought to you by the MTG Ambassador Program, but what are your picks? I'm sure y'all got some that are quite different. And if you're wondering what the MTG Ambassador program is, I'll link it for you here so you can check it out.